Now we want to solve for the solo model. Remember that under the solo model, once a k is determined, and then we know all the value for the other variables and also the future case. Therefore, in here we want to focus a special form of the k, which is the k in a steady state. And we want to solve it from the solo diagram and also numerically. So to begin with, I want to introduce how to come up with the k steady state based on the solo diagram. So to begin with, to draw the solo diagram, given that we are focusing on the steady state, we are given the steady state condition we mentioned earlier. We say for the solo model that the capital stock next period equal to 1 minus delta the capital stock this period plus the investment. But when we are focusing on the steady state, then this equation converted to the steady state condition, which is that the investment is equal to n plus delta multiplied by the kt. Then we want to start to draw the diagram. We say that the diagram has the vertical axis that is for yt and the horizontal axis is for kt. The reason why we choose kt on the x-axis is because we know the entire system described by the solo model can be represented by the k. So then the first equation that we want to draw on the solo diagram is the production function. For the production function is that when the k is higher, then the y is higher. However, the increment of the y when k increase become less and less. That is the property of the Cobb Douglas production function. And that is described by this equation in here. So now we have the production function drawn on the solo diagram. The other equation we can draw on the solo diagram is that we know saving is a portion of the output or the income. When the income equals zero, the saving is zero. But then when the income is greater than zero, then this saving needs to be proportional to the output or income. Therefore, we draw the saving curve like this. This saving curve, in fact, equals the investment. And thus, it also represents two equations. That is because when we look at the first equation, that is the consumption is a portion of the income. We know that the consumption then equals the income minus the savings. From the first equation, we know that the total output need to be either consumed or invested. After we rearrange the equation, we know that the consumption equals the output minus the investment. When we combine these two equations together, then we should know that the yt minus st delta yt equals yt minus it. So then we will be able to get that the it equals st delta yt which tell us that the investment need to be equal savings. And then this is the equilibrium of the goods market. And so I call it the equilibrium condition. Therefore, when we draw the saving curve on the diagram, in fact, as long as we assign it equals s delta yt, then this is the actual level of the investment. And this line already combined the information of the first equation and the fourth equation. So based on this diagram, you will see that when we are at this level of the K, the level of the B, in fact, is the investment. And then given that the YT minus the savings or minus the investment equals the consumption, so we know that this area or this line in here represents the consumption. And then the ADAP of the A and B is the total output. Same thing if we look at the label of the K at another label that is highlighted in purple, then the portion of the line highlighted as B is the investment. And then the part for A is for consumption and the ADAP of A and B equals the total output. So up to now, we already have three equations of the solo model 
drawn on the diagram. The first equation and the fourth equation is combined in the investment curve that equals the savings. The information of the second equation is captured by the production function drawn in here. Now the only equation that is left undrawn in this diagram is the law of motion. But we know that in here we want to focus on the steady state, so we degenerated the law of motion into the steady state condition. Given that the steady state condition is the it equals n plus delta multiplied by kt, so it is a line proportional to the k, and the slope is n plus delta. When k is 0, the it equals 0. So this steady state condition can be drawn like this under the solo diagram. So then we argue that the intersection of the steady state condition and the actual investment should be the capital stock in the steady state. And that is because when we are at this level of the K, our investment equal the investment required to stay at this level. So why it is so? Let's look at the K level at this level and then we will notice that the actual size of the investment is of this height I highlight it in purple. But then the investment required to stay at this level of the K is highlighted in yellow. So then the actual investment in fact exceeding the investment required to stay at this level of the K. So we know that the capital stock need to increase because of that. On the other hand, if we are at this level of the K, then the actual investment is of this level that is highlighted in pink. However, what should be the amount of the investment needed to stay at this level of the K? Well, that is the this level that is highlighted in yellow. Therefore, the actual investment is less than the investment required to stay at this level of the K. Therefore, the capital stock level need to decrease next period. Then we prove that this point K steady state is a steady state. Because once we are there, we stay there. If we deviate away from it, we are going to go back to it. So this is how we come up with the capital stock in the steady state based on the solo diagram. We draw the production line, we draw the investment line which equals the savings, then it combines the information of the equilibrium condition and the household decision. And then we draw the steady state condition which is a new equation degenerated from the law of motion telling us if we want to stay at the same level of the K, what should be the investment required to stay there. And then once we combine the steady state condition and the equilibrium condition, that is the actual investment equal the savings, and then we will be able to come up with the K steady state. So then we know if we want to solve for the solo diagram based on the equations, that is solving for it numerically, then we need to include the steady state condition and the equilibrium condition and then we will be able to solve for the k steady state. The steady state condition tells us the investment needed to stay at the particular level of the k is it equals n plus delta kt. The equilibrium condition tells us the actual investment equal the savings and the saving is s delta yt, and yt is akt to the power of theta. So then we put the in, and then we combine these two equations. We are going to have n plus delta kt equals s delta a multiplied by kt power to the theta. So this equation combines the steady state condition and the equilibrium condition. And so this k in here is the k steady state. So then what should be the value for this k? 
Well, we just simply rearrange the equation. We are going to have kt to the power of 1 minus theta equal s delta multiplied by a divided by n plus delta. And then we can solve for the k, and this k is the k steady state. And this k steady state equal to s delta multiplied by a divided by n plus delta, the whole thing to the power of 1 over 1 minus theta. So as you can see in here, when we have the saving rate determined, the production efficiency determined, the population growth rate determined, and the depreciation rate determined, and the capital share determined, and then the capital stock in the steady state is determined. So that is how we solve for the capital stock in the steady state.